All righty then. So, um, as I say, welcome um, to our webinar, Understanding the Full Picture, Resource Management with 10,000 Feet. My name is Alyssa Champion. I'm Marketing Manager here at Project Land Services, um, and I'm joined by Director Peter Arnack. Hello, Peter. Hi there. Hello. Afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Um, as I say, if you start trickling on in, do not worry. Um, and if, you miss the, if you've missed the beginning or whatever, we're going to send out the recording afterwards when we finish. So do not worry. Uh, so yes, yeah, so throughout this webinar, we are going to be discussing what is resource management and the role that it plays in business across a multitude of industries. Peter will then take us through a demo of the 10,000 feet solution powered by Smartsheet and then finally a Q&A. So there is a dedicated question and answer little button um, within Zoom within this webinar. So do drop us any questions or queries you have throughout um, and we will try and cover off as many as possible. We've also got um, our colleague George on hand who is our business development manager here. Um, so he will be on hand to answer any questions at the end also. Um, so to kick off, Peter, why don't uh, you introduce Project Plan Services and share a little bit more about us and, and what we do. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, great, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so for those of you who, who don't know us, Project Plan Services, um, we've been around for about 13 years now, and um, <clears throat> we, we started life as a Microsoft partner, uh, and then also um, started uh, reselling and working with uh, Smartsheet uh, back in 2013. Uh, and since then, I'm delighted to say that, you know, we, we consider to have sort of backed a bit of a winner as far as Smartsheet goes. Uh, the product has gone from strength to strength, and, um, you know, I can see some of our um, uh, existing clients and 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 some some unfamiliar faces uh, have kind of logged in to to join in on today's webinar. So uh, good to have you on board. Um, about 18 months ago, we became a Smartsheet Platinum Partner, the first Platinum Partner in the UK. And um, we're also a member of the Government G Cloud Framework. So for those of you who are uh, subject to having to use that framework or encouraged to use, uh, do so, then please feel free to reach out to us for any of your uh, Smartsheet licensing needs. In addition to Smartsheet, we offer 10,000 feet consultancy and licenses. Um, and also uh, as recently, as last weekend, we are now a um, partner for Brand Folder. And Brand Folder is a new addition to the Smartsheet family, uh, and that is um, focusing on digital asset management uh, for all of you creatives and marketing type organizations. Um, but uh, we will talk about that another time. We provide systems integration, um, API integrations um, from Smartsheet uh, and 10,000 feet into other solutions. And last but not least, we provide ongoing support. And support is all about helping you to um, uh, uh, accelerate adoption uh, of these systems into your organization uh, with a strong focus on helping people and uh, people change uh, ongoing learning and development. So um, we're here for the long run. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. So yes, a little bit about us. Um, really great insight as well to share with you all. Um, so we'll just kick right off then as to what is resource management? Well, as we all are very much aware, we are living in a post-pandemic, well, hopefully soon, um, and it is less about where your staff are located and more about their skill set and experience to help execute and complete tasks, projects and campaigns. So as we look to move into a more permanent approach, perhaps to flexible working with fewer face-to-face -face meetings or office environments, it presents us with that challenge of not truly understanding the full picture of our, of our team's workload and uh, their time and the resources available when they're on holiday, how they're perhaps swamped with tasks, whereas other people are a little bit more available. So um, it's just about having that insight and that visibility of resources, people, time and tools, and just being able to leverage these a little bit more in, in order to align them to meaningful work and goals. Oh, Peter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank, thanks, Alyssa. So um, the the slide the slide that we've uh, put up here really is just um, kind of highlighting a, a couple of themes that I'd like to run through on this afternoon's uh, demonstration. So uh, it's under the banner of uh, what is resource management and um, 
the these kind of um, items here are very much sort of things that are very sort of um, uh, close to my heart as far as resource management is is concerned. Um, based on my experiences in project and program management, um, the list is not exhaustive. I'm sure there are other things um, that um, uh, perhaps are, are not listed here mm. that uh, you you are kind of sort of um, uh, involved in or have been involved in. So, um, if there's anything we we haven't got here that you'd like us to touch on. Uh, in this demonstration at the end uh, or afterwards, please let us know via the Q&A uh, chat facility uh, in the in the Zoom's um, UI. So um, just a um, couple of, um, by way of explanation on some of these. So I'd like to cover off um, uh, resource pool, um, uh, where, who, skills, location, um, levels of experience, languages, um, all of those kind of attributes around um, your your particular workforce and uh, your particular resources available to you uh, within your organisation. Um, and, and very specifically, how much time have they got? How much time have these people got there? If, for example, they're working on an eight hour day, um, is it Monday to Friday full on? Is there only a proportion of that time that they are actually pragmatically available for uh, in order to be resourced onto projects or ad hoc work? I'd like to also touch um, on resource estimating um, so we can we can go into some of the techniques there um, around, for example, looking at previous projects that have been completed, getting subject matter experts involved, top down, bottom up um, estimating and sizing uh, of resource estimates um, dependent upon the, the nature of the project work that's envis envisaged to go ahead. Uh, Role-based planning, so we'll have a look at roles uh, within resource pools, so that the effectively generic resource placeholders and how they can be used to best effect. Um, and also um, resource scenario planning. So we'll we'll see how 10,000 feet can show you uh, what is happening, who's doing what with your live projects um, as we speak uh, versus tentative projects that are in the pipeline being planned, being considered for the future. Requesting resources is very important um, in smaller organizations, possibly less um, uh, less formality is required. Larger organisations definitely need a formal process um, to, to ensure that uh, chaos does not reign and everyone's grabbing uh, resources um, without, um, without kind of reviewing uh, other, other kind of demands and other sort of priorities, etc. Um, assigning resources, so just a couple of points on that I wanted to go through, um, and then capacity and utilisation. So our capacity being defined by our resource pool with all of those attributes that have been uh, set up and are being maintained, and utilisation is looking at the um, um, the amount of work that has been demanded or is being demanded and is being actually carried out on that demand. So um, that um, finishing off um, leading into accounting uh, for time spent on projects as well. So how to actually capture actual utilisation versus the original forecast. Mm -hmm. So um, they're just some of the things I wanted to touch on in the demo. Um, Elisa, is there anything else at all before? Uh... Yeah, I think, I mean, just to just to come back to that point you made at the beginning, you know, that the resource management, this isn't an exhaustive list. And I think what's really interesting with resource management is that everyone looks at it in a slightly different light or perspective, but um, it's something that affects us all to a certain extent, whatever that perspective may be. So it's just about finding, you know, potential ways to overcome an endless number of uh, challenges and tasks and things yep. like that. Okay, brilliant. Great, all righty then. So let's um, head on into the demo then. So I will um, pass over to you, Peter, for that. I'll stop sharing my screen and let you pick up from there. Okay, thank you. Okay, so hopefully, um, hopefully you can all see um, my screen, which is kind of showing um, 10,000 feet. So for those of you who haven't seen 10,000 feet before, you're now looking at it. And I've gone straight into the, um, what I consider to be the most uh, frequently used uh, page within within the system. So um, 
10,000 feet is a cloud-based application. And um, for, the, for those of you who are involved and have uh, 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 and, and still are using Smartsheet, um, although it is part of the Smartsheet family, it is a standalone solution in, in its own right. So what I wanted to do initially now is to kind of show you how you can use it in a standalone uh, kind of mode. Uh, and then a bit later on, I'll show you how, uh, how you can actually get it to uh, work in conjunction with Smartsheet. So by, by way of a quick overview uh, of what you're seeing here and in some of the other screens, I'll just kind of talk you through the, uh, the main points here. So um, down the left hand side, we have a list of resource names. So obviously, you know, as they, these kind of names suggest and the, and the pictures there, these are real people in the organization um, in different roles with different skill sets. Um, and I can kind of scroll up and down the page here to kind of expose uh, more um, uh, more people in, in the resource pool, including um, what we spoke about uh, uh, at the kickoff there, which is these kind of generic roles, the role-based role, role -based planning. So I've got some roles there, business analysts, for example, developers, project managers, et cetera. And we'll come back to that a bit later on. Um, from left to right across the screen, you have the, uh, the, time, uh, the time scale uh, and using uh, the mouse, you know, there is a high speed, very, very quick, very dynamic, um, scrolling capability, which is which is really good. It's a you know the, the, you know as a whole, it's a very nice a very nice drive, so to speak, uh, with this application. The the bars in the middle um, indicate the resource assignments that people are either on or people have um, they're potentially been earmarked for. So. Um, the, the color coding is um, blue is for tentative, so that's confirmed. So that's a confirmed resource engagement, um, you know, typically agreed by the resource manager in, con in conjunction with those resources. Uh, the purple uh, is indicating a resource engagement for um, typically a uh, permanent resource or, or somebody who is uh, not necessarily dedicated to an individual piece of project work. Um, um, and then the third main 10,000 feet uh, color um, depiction on, on these assignment bars uh, is the dark gray. So dark gray represents tentative work. Okay, so this is work that may go ahead, um, but hasn't necessarily been signed or signed off uh, to go ahead as yet. There is also light gray here, um, which indicates remaining availability. So if we look at um, Alison's potential assignment here kicking off mid-month, um, she has been earmarked or, uh, on this for uh, at 50%. I don't know if you can just see, see the 50% allocation there for 26 working days. Mm -hmm. And there, therefore, out of Alison's um, total uh, capacity, um, she has an extra 50% availability in that particular time period so um, we can drop a, we can drop extra work in uh, onto onto Allison's kind of work stack um, you know on on that basis finally you have uh, orange which depicts vacations uh, and um, you may not be able to see on this particular view but um, some of the weekends are actually shown as kind of like three-day uh, weekends that depicts the uh, the statutory sort of bank holidays uh, and any other sort of company stand down periods you might want to have set up um, uh, across your resource pool. You'll also see these, um, if I to, um, come down to Chad here, you can see that uh, there's a 100% a red um, bar here that is kind of highlighting uh, that Chad for that time period is actually oversubscribed. He's he's way over his 100%. Uh, he's effectively um, been demanded onto that project at 200% there. So so that's something we kind of like need to look at to kind of resolve and, and see if there is a real issue there for, for Chad. Um, with this, with, with this particular um, people schedule view, um, if I just click on the, the margin, that exposes like um, an additional margin just to the left here. And there's a whole series of options here whereby you can use these filters uh, to filter this view uh, of people and resources. There aren't too many in this example, but if you imagine um, some organizations are using hundreds and th hundreds and thousands of uh, resources, then it's absolutely essential that um, you have the capability to, to do some filtering 
once you've set up those filters, then you can save them as uh, an individual uh, personal view or a shared view. So um, here is uh, a view that I've saved. This is the business analyst pool, um, uh, test manager pool, for example, solution architect pool, um, and um, <clears throat> the generic uh, resource pool as well. So that, you know, very, very quick, very easy to sort of move over to uh, uh, between between views there. The the main view that you see here uh, on the resource pool is um, the what I call like the detailed view here. You can collapse these assignments down to the simple what we call the allocation heat map view, um, and that collapses all of the all of the assignments down into a single one liner. So if you've got a large resource pool, um, it, 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 it's so easy to switch to this view. Uh, and see the wood for the trees in terms of gaps of availability, um, hot spots of over demand, over utilization, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, um, and, and from here, you can then expose, if you need to, the details below these particular hot spots, yeah, or, or points, um, points of attention uh, or potential, you know, um, spare, spare availability. So I think um, <clears throat> that's probably it really for the, for the people view. So just thinking back to those, those themes, the resource pool. So this is the resource pool. It represents everyone, um, in, uh, everyone available for um, uh, carrying out work in the organization. Also don't limit, um, limit yourself to just people. It could be uh, mach uh, machinery, um, key facilities, laboratories, test labs, um, uh, all, all manner of things, even 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 kind of room bookings and things like that. If you, if um, if that's part part of your potential use case, I'd like to now switch over to the projects view here. So by switching to the project view, we now see a collection of projects. So this is kind of the inverse of what we just saw um, on the. Um, uh, on the previous people view. So the people view is showing uh, grouping by people and what they're working on. The projects view here shows the projects and you can similarly to uh, the the other, um, uh, the, the people view, you can actually kind of explode the detail here um, and uh, show what is being done by whom there. So there's, you know, there's a couple of different options there. I tend to work in the people view the majority of the time, but you have got this as well. And this is a good place where potentially you can put your pipeline projects in as well as potential items um, that may go ahead um, uh, if signed off or, and indeed if you have the resources to do it. Okay, so um, I want to now move to the project page. So the project page here is an area where you can create your project. So thinking 10,000 feet, we're not we're not dealing with Smartsheet at the moment. We're literally thinking of this as a standalone um, uh, application in its own right. So it's here that we can create a new project and then begin to assign uh, resources to it. So let's just um, have a go now. I'm just going to create a, uh, a new, a uh, new project here, nice and simple to do. So I'm going to call this the 10,000 feet webinar demo. And within this page, there's a whole um, list or um, of potential options that you can fill in. You don't, there's not many that are actually mandatory, but um, for example, uh, we could put a, uh, a client um, name against uh, a particular project, project codes. Um, key one here is the project type. So thinking back to whether it's a confirmed project, internal or tentative, so that drives the colors there on the, on the schedule. Um, you can put in a high level or at least a starting start date um, and a um, potential finish date. So I've, I've <clears throat> said that this project is running from <coughs> excuse me, from um, from today right through tentatively out to the end of uh, June. Um, and then we can put in a project status here. So not signed at the moment, et cetera, et cetera. Notifications, you've got the capability to notify P 
people when they've been assigned to work. So improves improves the collaboration there, people getting real time updates on, on initial uh, assignment to work and if things change. You can also put budgets in, you can put a budget against a project for the time. So you can um, quantify how, you know, is there, for example, 100 hours that have been signed off on the project, the same for costs and the same for expenses. If you want to, you can go into driving costs through billing rates. So you can have billing rates against individual resources as well. So again, it helps to um, join things up. And you know, in my experience uh, uh, in, in resource management, um, it, it tends to be you know a spreadsheet here for this and another spreadsheet there for something else. I mean, a finance system for the costs and so on and so on. So um, <clears throat> it. it 10,000 feet comes with a lot of this um, kind of unified. So um, I'm not going to fill in any more information just yet. Um, 10,000 feet webinar demo, and I'm now going to save that as a new project. Straight away, um, the application takes me to a landing page for the project. And the intention is that this is the page that um, your team can go to to find out the latest. <clears throat> um, uh, status on the project. You can put in a, a, a project description here to give it a bit of a bit of narrative. Um, you'll see it shortly when we start adding people to this project, it will then list those people here, list their assignments. And as you begin to build up this information and build up uh, people's uh, assignments, then it will begin to build up some of this information, some of these kind of KPIs over here on the left hand side uh, as to the budget, the, the overall duration, etc. Okay. Um, let me go to the work list here. So again, thinking standalone um, and thinking now about the point uh, from the beginning about um, uh, role-based planning. Um, so we're at the early stage of this particular project, but I, I know for sure um, that I'm going to need uh, a business analyst. Okay, so um, rather than asking for a specific one, you know, you may have a large BA pool, 15 business analysts, something like that. Um, I'm not really too fussed um, which BA I, I get. Um, so I'm just going to put in a demand for that now. Okay, so business analyst. Um, and then that has now been put as a new work item in uh, the work list for this particular work. I also would like um, a project manager. And then just for now, um, I'm going to also ask for a um, solution architect to help me doing some of the design work. So um, you'll see here that this has uh, taken a project start dates and start and end dates, and it's basically just kind of applied all of those on mass really to um, uh, all being sort of required sort of equally over that time period. But you can then click on any, any of these items here and kind of massage those figures uh, as you need to. So um, my BA, my project, uh, sorry, my, yeah, my, my business analyst, um, you know, I'm keen to sort of have them 100% pretty much from, from the word go. My solution architect, I'm not going to need that person straight away. Um, so I'm probably going to push back their involvement uh, a good month or so uh, to May uh, and then and e only then still um, I'm probably going to only need them maybe just two days a week so I'm just going to put their percentage in uh, at 40% uh, over that time period and you can see those figures being reflected here. Now so this is all about building up my high level resource estimate based on previous experiences and working with my SMEs to give me um, a high level uh, resource plan. Um, I don't really at this stage need to go into any any more detail. This is very much the, the high level resource plan. Um, if I try breaking these down into um, a, a very, very detailed, exhaustive list of tasks, which I could do, and the system will allow you to do that and break them down by phases. Um, then there's a danger that I could get lost, uh, get lost in the weeds and be second guessing the actual detail of the work. So I'm going to keep it high level uh, at this moment in time. So we've got the three generic resources, generic placeholders, um, and and that's all I need to do as the person charged with building this initial resource plan. 
Let's switch over to the schedule. Let's go back to the people schedule. So I mentioned this is where um, the majority um, of uh, work and kind of analysis sort of takes place. Um, and I'm just going to scroll down the page to our generic resources. OK, so I can see these three grayed out items here. Um, we have the business analyst, generic demand, project manager and the solution architect as well. Um, now, I can, um, depending on the, the number of resources in my team or my team, so I'm playing, you know, essentially the role of a resource manager now, um, I could directly reassign those to individuals um, as easily as clicking on the assignment. It brings up a list of kind of options here. The one we're looking for is reassign. Um, so we can re now reassign uh, to one or more individuals. If you know their name and you know they're free, you can just select them from here and that will just immediately reassign that work to them. You can also put in a, uh, a filter here. So um, I'm just going to type in uh, business or as you can see, it's done it straight away here. So um, if I just click on business um, analysis, matching people. So we have three BAs, Alison, Fred and Kyle. Uh, it's found them for me because in our resource pool, we set them up with the, with the relevant skills, nice and easy. However, um, I want to do a bit more work, a bit more review on this, um, rather than just assuming that these matching people are available. So um, I'm gonna switch over to my BA pool here. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a filtered view, and I'm going to basically uh, look to see who is um, who, who's kind of currently available. So I can see in that time scale that we're looking uh, to book um, uh, this particular piece of work on. I can certainly see that Alison is available. So in its simplest form, um, I can now reassign that off to Alison, and in doing so, it's now taken that resource demand away from the BA generic and it's handed it over to Alison. You can obviously see here that um, we've now got an issue with um, over allocation for the second part of that period. So there's an, as, as with the, you know, things in the real world with resource management, uh, it's about um, balance, you know, a balance uh, of all the different constraints. Uh, within the organization uh, with regards to your limited resources. So um, as an example here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end date for that engagement uh, initially and I'm going to shrink that down. So for the first couple of months or so, um, I would like Alison to take on that piece of work, but clearly because she's already booked at 50% uh, on, on another project, I can't give her that full time project. So I'm going to as a and and this would be obviously a real world conversation with uh, the the um, project manager. I'm going to kind of negotiate with him uh, to say, well, I can give you a BA, but unfortunately, due to limited resources, I can only give you half a BA. All right. So we've made that adjustment now. Um, and then that gives myself as a resource manager time to look for um, another BA who we can use to uh, fulfill the, the second part of that uh, requirement um, for that particular project. OK, so that's just one one kind of example of kind of re reassigning um, people um, within the, uh, the different projects and using the people interface in 10,000 feet. So um, what I want to do now is just head back to the actual uh, project page that we set up initially. Here it is, 10,000 feet webinar demo. And um, you'll see, uh, as, as I suggested earlier on, that the, the landing page is now beginning to build up with information. So we've got uh, Alison on the project now. We've got a couple of placeholders that we need to uh, sort out the demand uh, there. Uh, four, we've got some potential costs now coming into this based on uh, the, the duration and the, the amount of work uh, envisaged. Um, yeah, in this case, just, just kind of uh, for, for Alison and um, just switching on to the remaining sort of tabs on the, on the main project page here, you will see a schedule 
uh, depiction uh, of the work and the assignments against the work list deliverables. Uh, and then finally, the final tab here on this particular page is a, um, a bit of a social feed here, which um, lists all main changes on the project, particularly things like assignments to individuals and then uh, uh, changes to those assignments if, if they need to. And you can see here, you can click to follow. So you can follow uh, particular projects if, if you're interested in uh, what, things, what things are changing, changing on them. Okay, um, so we've looked at, um, just to recap before uh, kind of move into the, the smart sheet worlds, we've looked at the, the resource pool um, uh, approach in 10,000 feet, nice and visual, uh, very dynamic, um, nice, and, nice and visual um, and, and very fast. Um, we've looked at um, the, the project side of life as well, how you can sort of turn that on its head and look at uh, which projects have got which people working on them, uh, filtered views and the ability to kind of uh, drag and drop very quickly um, on, on the fly really uh, as, 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 as a resource manager uh, to be able to sort of massage people's um, assignments onto particular uh, jobs. Other things uh, you can do here, you can repeat items, you can create new assignments, um, you can construe um, uh, work uh, on a percentage effort basis, uh, or by hours per day, uh, or by total, so total hours um, on that particular assignment. And then finally, you can actually split work. So you can actually split large assignments down into uh, more uh, convenient, more kind of practical chunks for, for managing within, within the system. Okay, so that's, that's very much a standalone um, uh, uh, means of using 10,000 feet. Um, finishing off really um, with uh, the individual homepage. So everyone has an individual homepage, uh, key information about the individual, what they're working on currently, what, what they've done, what they're planning to do in the next sort of 30 days or so. There is a time tracking facility in uh, the tool set. So what this is doing is it's bringing in um, suggested time entries from the assignments that you're working on in the system. Okay. Um, and then against those time entries, you can either confirm those as actuals uh, or you can um, come into the particular item itself. And I can say, for example, I didn't do any work on that project uh, and I'm not going to be doing any work on that at all this week, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or perhaps, you know, if we're coming down to, um, I'll just put some, some figures in for Friday. So four hours on that project on Friday, I and mean, then you can submit that time for approval. So what I've just shown you there is um, assigning uh, time worked or the actuals um, uh, for those particular line items for uh, the current week. You can suggest um, or you can actually add extra line items based on categories. All of these categories can be set up as per uh, your own organizational requirements. So you can classify and report consistently against types of work that, is take, that are taking place um, consistently across multiple projects. Uh, and you can, if you want to, you can take this down to a daily level of granularity and you'll see that you've got a little start timer here. So if you think about things like help desk teams, people on support teams where they're accruing an hour here, an hour there, uh, and they want to quite forensically kind of track that and attribute it to um, types of work uh, and against projects, then that is available through the tool, through the tool set as well. Finally, um, on the domain uh, 10,000 feet, again, from a standalone perspective, you have the analytics uh, capability here, which is the reporting um, tools um, and the uh, main analytics page here gives you a summary view of active projects tracked from a budgetary perspective. 
Uh, are you on budget? Have you are you exceeding your budget um, as envisaged? And also from a schedule perspective as well. So there's a little bit of the earned value kind of analysis going on here in terms of are you overperforming? Are you underperforming um, based on uh, what you set out? What you set out to do? Now this is the summary information here. There are custom reports that, that you can build, very easy to build. I'm just going to jump into one here. This is the next 90 days utilization. Each of the reports in 10,000 feet is essentially one of four types. So the report types are it's a time and fees report, um, uh, useful for um, uh, uh, monitor, monitoring the, uh, the 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 actual expenditure on on a particular project with a view to potentially re rebilling an end client uh, expenses. <clears throat> so that's a cut down similar similar to the one above, but it just it just deals with the expenses side of uh, ten thousand feet. But obviously that's all part and parcel of the the overall project. The budgets just coming from a budgetary perspective, and then finally utilization. Once you've selected one of these four types, you then use uh, one or uh, many of these different filters to get you to the particular view that you'd like to see. So this one here shows a time scale of 90 days look ahead for all of the team members in the resource pool. Uh, and essentially what we're seeing over here on the right hand side based on this legend at the top is we're seeing um, target utilization so target utilizations can be set so although somebody is available for example 40 hours a week um, and we're saying that they are typically 100 percent working on on that day we might actually say well actually we only want to assign them to work uh, project work or billable work or work that we need to track at say 50 percent they may have another 50 percent business as usual role they may have some management responsibility um, <clears throat> they may be responsible for ad hoc reactive support work um, et cetera et cetera 75 percent in the case of uh, this uh, Alan Simmons um, the vast majority of other people at 100 percent and these bars, based on the legends here, will give you a view of whether they are being currently underutilized um, and um, or overutilized or, or, or spot on, spot on uh, target. This is covering the next 90 days, so it might be useful then to um, uh, group this by, for example, months. And then this would show the utilization uh, for people out um, on a monthly basis that you can uh, then kind of explore to see where potential hotspots are. OK, so I can just see very quickly at a glance here um, what's going, what's actually happening uh, over the next foreseeable um, period. So these, these reports are very easy to massage, um, put in your put in the filters, drill down to um, what you're looking for. And um, yeah, the with the groupings as well. So you can kind of sort of make make that report your own. These reports can be exported out to Excel, uh, shared and saved. And you know, obviously you can kind of reuse those. I now want to um, move into the. Before we move on, Peter. Sorry. Yes. Um, question about the the finances and everything like that in terms of the planning. So, for example, you built the project in there that ten thousand feet webinar demo project, and you tentatively assigned some resources onto that project. Is there the capability within ten thousand feet to scope out the budget and the resource and? Um, you know everything needed to see that future projects based on previous projects would meet certain budgets and what type of resources and things you'd need for that yeah 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 absolutely so um you can um i mean the 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 kind of the example here is kind of showing an, an initial or very very early early stage sort of estimate literally at the the top level high level plan so i want to i want a business analyst for, for three months uh, a, a solution architect for two months etc um 
what you would do as part of sort of you know the next step is you would build this out add some phases in add some add some extra deliverables in uh to to the schedule um and then when you start start kind of assigning resources even even sort of placeholder generic resources to that then that will start assigning a a deemed uh, essentially a deemed sort of demand uh, demand on on the on the particular uh, for that particular stage as well and sim similar for budgets as well so yeah you can you can take it down to quite quite a detailed level if you need to um in my experience at this stage, try and keep it simple, keep it kind of relatively high level. Um, I think when when you kind of start moving into potentially, if you want to use this with Smartsheet as well, uh, then you can get even more granular um, and uh, you know get get to a, a very a very fine level of uh, of granularity if you need to. Does that does that help? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just whilst we're on here before we go on, just because this question is relevant to uh, the demo and this part um, about uploading staff members into 10,000 feet and how you get them to sit within those uh, pools like that business um, analyst pool yeah. and the project management pool and, you know, the process of, of getting the team up there and assigning their skill set within uh, 10,000 feet. Yes, that's that's a great question. So um, I've just gone on to the the people um, uh, the people page. So this is you know a, essentially a flat list of all the people in the organisation that you want want to be tracked through 10,000 feet. Um, if I just click into Alison here, then uh, and edit her edit her profile, then you'll see there's a number of attributes there that you can associate with, with Alison. Um, and with regards to um, which pool uh, that they sit in there, so uh, there is a team uh, that she can belong to and you have the flexibility in the organization to kind of define what these are. I mean, I've called them pools, they could be anything, you know, you know, team A, team B, you know, department level uh, name, etc. Similarly for skills as well. Um, so the skills you can define uh, at the organizational level uh, and you can associate one or more skills uh, uh, or disciplines or roles or departments uh, with those individuals, how you actually get those people in to 10,000 feet rather than having to type them all in individually. And uh, you know, I imagine a lot of, lot of organizations, you know, they're going to, you know, it's going to, it, it is a typical question. Uh, there is the, um, the people essentially you can import um, from a spreadsheet and then you can continue to keep that spreadsheet up to date um, by doing a regular refresh. There is some single sign-on uh, capability with this, so that you can connect it up to your uh, existing uh, Azure, if you're using Azure uh, directory, Active Directory, um, so that it works sort of hand in glove with your existing systems. Um, it's not there yet, but I think in the fullness of time, um, there will be um, a synchronization capability whereby you can synchronize these people. I mean, we've got 27 managed resources here. If you imagine an organization with a thousand resources, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to be able to do that through Azure Active Directory to bring those people in and keep it fully up to date. So you can do that. Um, and uh, yeah, as I say, the um, with, with that bulk upload process, you can set people's skills and their locations and all of those attributes uh, quite, quite easily. Um, and it's a similar scenario for projects as well. So if you're looking to migrate to 10,000 feet, then um, you can bring, you can uh, do the similar things. So you can take a list of your existing projects, their start and end dates, how far along they are, and you can bulk import them into, in, into 10,000 feet. So you don't need to build them all from scratch. Does that, does that help? Great, yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's often, often the case, isn't it? You know, people recognise that they're facing these particular challenges and there's solutions available, but often it's the uh, the 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 change that um, can can be quite difficult. Often, so it's about just streamlining those processes, that integration, to make sure it's as seamless as it can be. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the points that I touched on at the beginning uh, was with regards to um, <clears throat> re requesting resources. So um, I'd like to sort of move on now to uh, ten to the use of Smartsheet with ten thousand feet. So I'm just going to switch over here now to Smartsheet. So uh, I appreciate probably not everyone uses Smartsheet. So uh, a quick one-liner: Smartsheet is a work collaboration uh, solution that enables you to uh, build and easily uh, collaborate on uh, either structure work or ad hoc work uh, or a combination of both. Um, so I'm just going to, from this dashboard, I'm just going to drill into a sample project plan. So this is a delivery project plan. I'll just switch the Gantt chart on here. Um, <clears throat> and this is a work in progress project. But what I'd like to do is to connect this into 10,000 feet because I'd like to um, replace these resources um, uh, or, or basically scope out some, some extra work um, uh, with, uh, with the business analyst in mind. Okay, so let's use the business analyst as an example. So the, the first thing is you'll see over here there, uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Smartsheet, uh, there's a side panel here with a number of icons uh, on. Uh, the one um, you probably haven't seen before is the 10,000 feet side panel. Um, which which comes with a 10,000 feet uh, tool. It's a built-in integrator. It, you know, it's not going to cost you anything e extra. It just comes with the subscription to 10,000 feet. Here you have an option to either <clears throat> take this project um, and import it into 10,000 feet, okay? Um, or you could connect this project schedule to an existing 10,000 feet project. Okay, so it might be something that you have or your resource manager or your program manager or your PMO has actually built the skeleton of a large uh, of a project or built the skeleton of the resource plan in 10,000 feet. Uh, and now you have a project manager who already kind of has a bit of a template, something they've used before that they want to connect to that entity in 10,000 feet. If nothing exists in 10,000 feet and it's entirely up to you how you want to drive your processes, um, your resource management processes between the two entities of Smartsheet 10,000 feet. You could use a bottom-up approach which effectively says all new projects and all new resource demands are actually built in Smartsheet. So you take a standard Smartsheet project plan or any other template, you build it, you put some resources in, and then you connect it as a new project. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to call um, this the, um, well, I'm going to give it, call it the same name. So C, um, CAA 14 project plan. Um, and the start and the end dates here default to the start and the end date of your scheduling smart uh, smart sheet. And I'm just going to click connect project. That will, um, in the blink of an eye, it is now, connected it to 10,000 feet. And if I switch over to 10,000 feet uh, to the projects page, then right here, um, I can see a new project has been created and it's got a link here back to the Smartsheet project. Okay, so you've got that um, bi-directional link there that's now, now set up and you can sort of navigate between the two as you need to. So let's look at um, how this works in practice. So um, I'm going to move beyond the planning phase of this project and I'm now going to move into requirements gathering. OK, so we need to do some analysis before we can um, start coming up with a design. So similar to 10,000 feet, I could either put somebody's name in here who is effectively their name. They've been handed to me on a plate or as the organisation gets bigger and bigger, it needs to be managed uh, to avoid com conflicts, to ensure the right types of um, individual, the right skill level, experience level, um, and th even things like personal development of those individuals. You don't want to put someone who um, is, is brand new into an organization onto the most challenging um, uh, project that they that they could be dropped in on necessarily. That might be a good development need for them, might not. Um, the point being, part of this 
assignment process is down to the individual resource manager or the practice manager, in this case for the business analysts, and they can uh, decide the best person for the job. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask for a business analyst. So because we're connected to 10,000 feet, the system knows that there is a generic resource type called business analyst. OK, and I'm going to say I want the that business analyst for all of this work in this particular phase. So as you are filling this information in and as you are putting a deemed percentage um, effort that you want them at. Now, the default is 100 percent, but you could massage that down to 50 or 25. You know, keep it simple. Stupid is, is would be my advice. You, you want to you don't want to end up constantly having to kind of massage this plan all, all of the time and spending all your time updating it rather than actually delivering the project. So keep it as simple as you can. Business analyst, 100 percent. And you'll see what's happened is the 10,000 feet panel has kept up with what you're doing in Smartsheet. And it's now showing it as a tentative piece of work here for the BA in, in, the, context, in the context of this timeline at the top. So here's the overall project timeline. And this is the relative position of that work for the BA. So let me just add that to 10,000 feet. And what that is actually doing is it's pushing that potential resource assignment on the BA to the 10,000 feet project plan. So let me just refresh that page there. OK, and I can now see we have a BA and some potential work here. Let's have a look at the, the work list and you'll see that it's actually at the exact granular level that you have it in Smartsheet. It's now pushed it uh, uh, up to 10,000 feet. And this is why I'm kind of, sort of saying or indicated perhaps keep this simple um but you can go down you can go down to the individual task level and that will be honored and reflected up into 10,000 feet so um what i would like to do now is let's just take another task here and i'm going to um let's just make this a solution architect um, because that's a design task and 10,000 feet is recognized that it needs sinking up to 10,000 feet itself uh, which it has now done so and <clears throat> although I'm in the people view I go down to my solution architect then I can see that we have a new um, potential assignment here for a solution architect on that particular project plan. And then I can go into the uh, the relevant um, matching process to see who is available as a solution architect with that skill set. OK, looks like it's Dan. Um, that's moved that piece of work over to uh, Dan. Can't quite find them at the moment, seems to be missing from this view. Um, however, if I now um, refresh the individual smart sheet plan here, so this is where the resource manager has agreed <clears throat> that assignment. He's moved it over to Dan. You'll see that the side panel here in smart sheet has now reflected Dan as being assigned onto the project. All that remains for me to do now is actually in the schedule is to swap out the generic for um, the actual person, Dan. OK, and you'll see that's now reflected here. There is no longer a generic and uh, Dan is the, the man for that piece of work. So um, that was a very quick illustration of how the integration works. Um, and there's, obviously, you can come at it from top down, bottom up or a combination of both. It really needs to be driven by um, ideally some robust processes where you have some resource managers overseeing this to ensure that sort of chaos doesn't ensue and that individual project managers are booking people independently uh, without really sort of thinking about, um, you know, those resources being um, uh, used on other projects. There is more detail available here in this side panel here to indicate to the project manager if 
for example, in this case, uh, the business analyst or Dan or whoever it is, is already committed. So um, there would be a red line here to see it, uh, to indicate if Dan was already committed on another project. However, I'm going to stop now, um, very conscious of time. And um, Alyssa, can we um, defer back to you? If, I don't know if there's any questions. Absolutely, we yeah. So we shall move on. Just pull back my spreadsheet. Here we go. So wonderful. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Peter. Really great insightful demo. Yeah, covered lots of ground there. So if anyone does have any questions, um, do drop them in the Q and A box. Um, don't worry if you feel that your question is quite tailored or bespoke to you and your organisation. Um, I'll touch on that a little bit in a second. Um, but yeah, just a couple of questions, Peter. Mainly. Um, around kind of how the, the licensing system works for 10,000 feet and uh, permission levels and things like that. Yeah, so um, essentially, yeah, so 10,000 feet, it's a separate application and it has separate licensing in its own right. Uh, so um, in order, a little bit similar to Smartsheet, in order to do most of the things in 10,000 feet, you would need a 10,000 feet full license. Uh, in order to, um, and that, um, uh, in order to uh, add extra resources into the resource pool, who are essentially managed resources. So it could be contractors, it, um, it, you know, it could be organization, uh, it could be, you know, I, you know, you could something like IBM or Deloitte's or, or a third party organization. You can add these entities in as what we call managed resources. They don't have systems access to 10,000 feet, but they're an entity as a resource in, in the pool and therefore you can reschedule them and, and put them onto tasks uh, as, as you would do if they existed in your own organization. Mm. So there's a separate license for that, um, which costs slightly less. And then finally, last but not least, there's a time tracking license where uh, this gives systems access only to people who need to fill in timesheets. So again, it could be third party contractors. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking actual uh, individuals rather than a, a contract you'd have with a company where individuals, uh, you know, need to record their time against projects. So um, and within but going back to the top level license within that there are permissions all the way down from administrator down through uh, project manager scheduler um, team members um, uh, and and contractors so contractors mm -hmm. having the least permissions they can literally only see the timesheet uh, for the for the, the work they're they're doing and um, uh, then it kind of sort of increases from that. So lots of lots of variations, hopefully to cater for most for most situations. Absolutely. Um, and again, if anyone who is listening um, has any particular questions on, you know, the case for them and, and what works, by all means, um, get in touch. Um, I'm just very conscious of time. So if anyone does have any other questions, I know George has been um, keeping an eye on the Q&A box. So thank you, George. Um, we will cover those off. Um, so just moving on to summarize them, basically. So that uh, email address at the bottom, solutions at projectplanservices.co.uk. Um, the team will be on hand to answer any additional questions um, that you have. Um, but as a result of this and kind of concluding our webinar, really, um, we offer a 14 day free trial for 10,000 feet. Um, and we're also very excited to be able to, for the first time to offer um, access to our brand new Getting Started with 10,000 Feet online learning course um, for those who do sign up for a free trial. So it is um, a fully online learning portal, learning at your own pace and kind of get you um, started with 10,000 Feet really, as well as um, of course the team offering bespoke and tailored in-depth demos to suit you and your business needs. So again, if you feel that you've got particular questions based on um, your, your current situation or you know what the potential solution is for you by all means um get in touch but also you know drop a little message in the chat box um and we, we can pick up and get in touch with you also um so yes we're, we're very excited to be able to kind of offer this and um and hopefully help everyone out great brilliant thank you thanks Alyssa. um Absolutely. and uh yeah um 
thank you everyone for for joining the call um yeah all, thank all you so best. much as i say we will um be following up after the web webinar including sharing the recording so if for those of you who may have missed the beginning or you'd like to uh remind yourself of the demo and things we will be sharing that out um we hope you enjoyed it and found it useful uh thank you peter and george for joining me this afternoon and um we hope you all have a great day thank you so much guys take care